Hey guys, this is a video I've been wanting to do for a while on what some of our competitors refer to as dark sites. Um, it's largely what I built my business on, and it's something I believe in. Especially if you look at some of the examples we have within our franchise system of people who have gone into these quote unquote dark sites and found success. You know, first ones that come to mind is Newton, Iowa. Um, and so. I'm going to start off by talking about some of the sites that I bought and this really, there is a difference between purchasing a site and leasing a site. There's a lot more risk when you lease a dark site. That doesn't mean it's necessarily always a bad idea, but uh, I prefer to purchase dark sites. Uh, it just makes it a lot more manageable and gives you a little bit more flexibility. Um, case in point, the East Moline building, had that been a lease and not a building that I owned, with a $600 mortgage, uh, things would have been a lot different with that situation in terms of not being open for over a year because of the car that drove into the building. So I'm gonna start off with Fort Madison, which is the most recent real estate that I purchased. And one of the reasons I wanna do this video is, you know, I'm sitting here in the mid-Atlantic. I actually drove to Fort Madison. I tend to go visit the properties that I buy and, um, and I did visit it and I knew a little bit about it. I know the backstory. I did some research. I knew it was a speed loop building and I knew that it had not been an oil change facility for over a decade. And so uh, some of the other things I looked at was what does this town do for oil changes? And it's a small town. I'm going to let's go to the map real quick. And one of the things that's nice about Google Maps is you don't even need to get into the the weeds of the details to understand the size of different towns because the infrastructure of the map actually shows you what type of town it is. So if we scroll out and we just scroll out even a little bit more, you can tell what size town it is by the depiction of the coloring, right? So you have Davenport, Iowa. This is the Quad Cities. We we bought another dark. We bought a dark site here at Milan. We bought a dark site at East Moline uh, over here, and then we did the Fort Madison site as well. So if we scroll back in, the the closest town that had a quick loop is Keokuk in Burlington. We are the only oil change in all of Fort Madison, and the Burlington. Uh, Quick Lube is a mobile one, Lube Express, and their oil changes are very expensive. We're getting a ton of people pulling from that town. The town of Fort Madison was 10,000 people, and that encapsulates basically this whole area. There's a nice little bridge here, so some of these folks do come into this town for uh, services. But at the end of the day, this is a building I bought for a hundred grand on the nose, and uh, my I did finance it because in some of these towns, banks are willing to finance, you know, what are considered micro commercial loans. And so my mortgage payment is four hundred dollars a month. Um, so let's go to let's go back a second to the uh, actual map if we can. This is what the building looks like now. I would love to get to the map. There it is. Okay. So one of the things that I do when I look at quote unquote dark sites is I just go through its history. I go through and see, you know, what was it? If it was open, are, were there cars in bay? I wish they never took the sign down. We don't have a sign now. They, they took that down, unfortunately. Um, but let's go all the way back to 2008. It was the last time it was open. It was a Valvoline instant oil change. Now, that's also something to take into consideration. Was it one of the big brands that closed down? If it's one of the big brands that closed down, that to me is not a red flag versus an independent shop closing down. An independent shop closing down is more of a red flag to me because that means that that person wasn't able to engage with the community on a community level versus a Valvoline shutting down because they have arbitrary metrics of growth and these towns don't have growing populations. So eventually they hit ceilings and they decide, you know what, we're going to move on. The building was owned by someone other than Valvoline. The lease ended and they said, you know what, it's not producing the ticket average or the numbers I want. So that doesn't really apply to us. 
So we went into this building, we bought it, we converted it, looks beautiful, and the store has been incredibly successful. So let's talk a little bit more about the availability of these quote unquote dark sites. If you would go to Crexy, LoopNet, you type in lube, you type in oil change, or you just do automotive and you look for sites that have pits, there are a number of these sites available and we are ourselves looking at them. So once again, we'll take a look at something like this in Carbondale, Illinois, which is, uh, I'm a, this actually might be close to Fort Madison actually. Um, but the first thing I'll do when I look at a site like this is I'll take the address, I'll put it into Google and I'll see, okay, when was the last time it was open? This has been on the market for 899 days. I'm willing to bet if I offered them a thousand hundred thousand dollars, they'd probably take it. How many cars do I need to do to make a one hundred thousand dollar store profitable? The answer is not that many, and it also allows us to run the model the way that we want to run it. And we are when we are able to run the model the way we want to run it, we're going to get car count. So going back to the Fort Madison situation, they've averaged thirty cars a day since they've opened. One because they're the only horse in town, and two because we're able to do a pure quick loop model. We're able to do a pure oil change only model and the customers are absolutely just loving it. So there's not many pictures available on here. It looks like, uh, you know, it's got the tandem doors. I'm assuming it has pits, but because uh, it's not available via Crexy, we're going to have to go straight to Google. And from Google, we're going to take a peek we got to look and see, okay, when's the last time a car was in Bay? It looks like maybe someone actually did buy this and, and put a lot of money into it. So they had the same idea that we had. Um, that's an interesting, it's interesting that it's still listed. Uh, so we can go back now. Looks like it might have been a detail shop at some point. Uh, let's look on the map. We'll zoom out a little bit to see where Carbondale is. Looks like it's close to St. Louis, which means that it's pretty far from Fort Madison, which is up here. Very interesting, very, very interesting. So this is a site that I would at least take a look at. And I know that with the infrastructure I have in place, the team I have in place and the business model that we have, I would probably only have to go here once, maybe twice. And once it's set up, it's able to be run in perpetuity. The other thing I will look for though, just you know, for all intents and purposes is I will look for the closest major airport. So for Fort Madison, the one time I went there, I did drive. Um, but you can fly into Burlington. I fly into Quad Cities all the time. Quad Cities is where the headquarters of John Deere is. So they actually have a really nice airport and direct flights from Chicago. Um, my assumption is from here, your best bet is flying into St. Louis or Evansville and that's if you actually need to go in. Um, so like, for example, with our East Moline site that the car drove into it, I had to fly into uh, Quad Cities several times as a building owner, as a business owner. Those are the kind of things that you have to do. And those were the things that I did and why Mylan was doing well and why East Moline was getting back open. Uh, but coming back here, you know, I'll, I'll put a bookmark on it. I'll keep an eye on it. I'll see what's going on with it. At that price, it's really hard not to have a successful quick loop if you run our model. So we'll continue down this, you know, we'll do a jaunt down. And you got to make sure that it's for the building itself, not for the business, because sometimes people will sneak in listings on uh, Crexy that are for the business, not the building. Here's one in Toledo. Uh, it looks like it's already painted our colors a little bit, and uh, it's another one that I would I would.
would definitely take a look at, especially since Toledo is in a market that we already have another store. Um, we'll keep keep going. You got to be aware of these gas stations. Gas stations don't have the tandem doors and they don't have the pits. Um, so we'll keep going. One site that we are in the process of putting an offer in is actually a, a nice little find of a former quick lube called Mr. Fast Lube in Arkansas. Uh, there's four sites available. One of them we're looking to purchase and uh, the asking price on it is only $55,000. So not very much money at all. I don't think we'll be able to finance this. This will probably have to be a cash offer, which uh, should be fine. And then uh, what's preferable is when you can land multiple sites in the market, which is what happened with Milan and East Moline. They were right near each other. It made more sense to do both at the same time. Fort Madison is close enough to Milan that I thought we could add it to that, that portfolio. This Arkansas portfolio is very interesting. So again, I did my research. I put in the addresses in Google. I looked at the last time they were open. I found their old website. This is This website is straight out of the 90s. It's something that you know, if they were able, and, and you can, and here's another thing that I took into consideration. If you look at the building itself, the three buildings for these Mr. Fast Lubes, they were, they're all the same design. And what does that tell me? That means that Mr. Fast Lube at one point in time was a successful enough building to convince builders to build these buildings. So you, they're all the same design. And, and that's an important point because that means at one point in time, this was a successful little chain of, of uh, quick loops. And so many things can happen. This, this industry is turning 40 years old and uh, over 40 years old, 45 years old next year. Basically, it was 1979 when Jiffy Lube uh, started scaling nationally and uh, started introducing tandem doors and pits to the, to the country. And so... This, uh, you know, this this is an opportunity here to have four sites on day one, create a market, put a territory manager in place, and then it doesn't matter if it's in Arkansas. You know, I'm I'm nowhere close to Arkansas. If I were to look at the actual map, uh, I haven't even. One thing I haven't looked at is where am I flying into to to make this uh, market happen, and it looks like. Little Rock or Memphis, depending on where those other those other stores are, Blytheville, and there was another one in there, Batesville. So it looks like this is the market right here. So probably Little Rock, and probably stay in Jonesboro, which would be kind of that center point, um, or fly into Memphis, um, and possibly build out that market as well. So. Uh, there's a lot of things to look at. I, I implore everybody to not just immediately dismiss running a store from far away. You can have a lot of success, especially when you can create a market and have a manager in place to be your eyes and ears on site and just have check-ins with them, whether it's on Slack huddles, whether it's through text message. That's how I ran the business through the first 10 stores was a group text message with all the managers and I was essentially the territory manager. So uh, that's really all I wanted to convey with this video. So if anyone has any questions about what it's like to run a quote unquote dark site, reach out to me, happy to have a conversation. And uh, you know, that's part of why you join a franchise system is because we know how we know the playbook. We've done it. We've opened stores like this before and you know, we we're here to help. So uh, I want to appreciate all of you and please reach out if you have any questions and uh, thanks for listening to this video, and we'll see you later.